All right, I want to talk a little bit about some oils. Uh, there's a couple that came out right before we went to the uh, university, the hot rod oils. Okay. You guys saw those come out, the Z-rod oil, right? A couple things on that oil, because they specified to us there, and they amplified it, right, Tony, when they said, no, this is not the 1030 and the 2050 in another labeled bottle. It's not the same oil. It's a different oil. It's very high zinc and phosphorus, but it also has the same chemical rust inhibitor in that oil that's in our motorcycle oils and in our marine grade oil. So it's very good, and they made this oil kind of interesting. You know how they say, well, 5,000 miles or six months or something, you know, like for XL oil, 10,000 six months. They made this oil specifically 5,000 miles or one year, knowing that in these kind of vehicles, they weren't going to run a lot of miles on them, so they made the oil added a packet so that it could be guaranteed to go a year without having to change it out. And, and so that's a good selling point for us, because a lot of the guys with the hot rod cars, you know, they go, well, you know, I don't drive a lot, and I hate to have to change this oil, uh, you know, two or three times a year just to keep fresh oil in the engine. Well, this is a good thing to say we've got an oil that matches up for your uh, tappet, flat tappet uh, valve system, high zinc and phosphorus. It's going to give you great corrosion control, and you can leave it in there for a whole year. Now, you would hope we would have an EAO filter for them because those ones are designed to go the full distance. If they're going to use a Wix or some other filter, you know, technically you'd say that filter might not be good for six months. But I don't know that anybody would change it, to tell you the truth, six months. All right. Are there so plans with the 1040 and 2050 with the zinc? Are they going to steer that away from that market that they will push? No, you can, you can, but the difference is the 1040 and regular 2050 don't quite have the level of zinc and phosphorus that's in this oil. This oil is really jacked up. And the, those oils are still, the 2050 and the 1040 are SL rated automotive engine oils. The hot rod oil might qualify for, I, I haven't looked at the data, but I'd be surprised if it gets past SG or something because of the concentrations of zinc and phosphorus in it. Oh. <laughs> it would probably be above what's allowed for even SL. So, so it is a specialty oil, and we should treat it like a specialty oil. Recommended for these guys, and when they talk about hot rods, you could have a muscle car that you take out to the track and you want to let that thing rip, you know, ever two or three, you, you love to do it, right? One of the uh, original uh, muscle cars, like, you know, a Chevy Chevelle 396 or, you know, one of the early uh, Camaros, Z28, one of these kind of cars that's got a powerful big block engine in it, and it needs heavy zinc and phosphorus protection, okay? You can kind of tell that by the valve train. If the valve train is push rods and tappets, you probably want to use heavy zinc and phosphorus because that's where the limit is there. Solid lifter can. Solid lifter can. That's where it's zinc and phosphorus. Very important. question did come up about the Dominator. They recommended the Dominator about six to 800 horse and above. <clears throat> Switch them to the Dominator <laughs> racing one. In case you. Oh, the Z Rod. Well, Z Rod is. Is in that three hundred oars to about six, six, seven. Better picture than that. Doesn't say anything. I was going to bring up the oil. But go ahead. How would you like to? How would you attack Ben? And I've heard this before from people with the classic cars and such. They'll say, "Well, I only drive five thousand miles, so difference in oil makes. I can change it every year anyway. I'm going to change yours every year." So, so well, absolutely. Big deal. Yeah. Here's the problem. Very straightforward. You ask them, "Well, what oil do you buy?" They go, well, I get Castro, GTX. Oh, okay. That's what they do. And, and here's a simple question you ask. You got a bottle of that? You go, well, I don't have it with me. And you go back and look at your bottle. See if it says SM on the bottle. Because it will. Because you can't find Castro, GTX, or any of those oils that are not rated for the current rating. Mm -hmm. And if it says that it's SM rated, it's limited to 800 parts per million zinc and phosphorus. So, you can buy that oil, but the difference is, it's just like we told the guys with the motorcycles. You can buy that for your motorcycle. It'll just wear out your can, you know, because it doesn't have enough protection in it. Now, if you want to be a nice guy, okay, you can say, okay, listen, if you don't want to buy my oil, let me give you a piece of advice. Buy a good heavy-duty diesel CI4 Plus rated oil. 
They go, okay, I can find that. Well, no, you probably can't because they've all gone to CJ4 and they've limited the zinc and phosphorus in those oils. So where are you going to find an oil with heavy zinc and phosphorus to protect your solid lifters or your tap and valve system? And the truth is, you won't unless you go buy motorcycle oil. That's the other oil you can get right now. If you get a true motorcycle oil and you look on it and it says high zinc and phosphorus, then you're, you're covered. But that's why this is a big deal. You can't find, when the, when the new SM ratings came out, they limited zinc and phosphorus to eight tenths of 1%, which is about 800 ppm. You need about 1,200 ppm of zinc and phosphorus in those systems to protect those camshafts. And so you just can't get it. So if it says, I'm just going to run this oil, I'm just going to run 5,000 miles, I will tell you, there's a guy named Bobby Sears who built race cars and so forth. And uh, Bobby told me that one of his guys, he used to lease out uh, Pinto race cars, right? And little Mustangs, with the, they were called the mini stocks. Those little four cylinders and they're only turning about 7,500 RPM zinging around that track and really going, right? But the thing was, he would lease them out to guys and part of his deal was, okay, I lease it out to you, you have to use Amsoil, uh, synthetic racing oil, whatever these things, lease them out. But one of his guys decided that was too expensive and he just used regular oil. By the time he brought the thing back after the end of the racing season, and they only race 25 laps a weekend or something, he said the camshaft loads were gone. It was just worn down because that oil did not have the amount of zinc and phosphorus. It couldn't hold the, uh, the film of oil in there. So it just slowly wore the load down. Yeah, it was still running, but instead of the valve opening that much, the valve opening about that much because it's just, you know, just a short hop on the cam because the loads are worn down. So it's a real situation in performance vehicles. And if you remember how those uh, push rods and rocker arms work in that, that regular old system, you've got a push rod that's about, what, about the side of my finger, right, Tony? Up against a, a rocker arm. And the tip of that push rod is sitting in the socket of that rocker arm, and all that's separating those two things is that film of oil that's in there. And this thing's just, just going like this, you know, several thousand times. And if that oil doesn't have enough zinc and phosphorus in it in that contact point, pretty soon the push rod will just go through the rocker arm. Because it just wear a hole in it, just go right through it. So those are different systems. They're not the same as the roller cams, which are easier to lubricate, the new modern roller cams, what they call cam followers, and how that system works. But that's why this is a specialized oil for those muscle cars. And I'm telling you, some of those big block engines from that era, those things produce five, 600 horsepower. They, some of them have double four barrel holly carburetors on them. They're unbelievable amount of power. Now, you can, you can feel the gas pump when they hit the two four barrels kick in and you next to a gas station, you can see a couple of the pumps fly off the foundation and go past you because they're sucking so much gas. But power, no, not efficient, but power they have. Yeah, John. Um, just something you're saying is making me think about. It, it seems like what you're saying is that <clears throat> Amsoil is providing a lot of niche Absolutely. oils, and and so whereas Castor or whatever, they're just you know continue to update their oils to whatever the current thing is, and That's just right. expect you to use them for. Um, and so I guess I mean that that provides us a real, I guess, an advantage in terms of all the different... If, if we know our niche, right. and we know where we can market in that niche, we are very well suited because, like you said, the, the standard oils are making it to meet the latest specification. It's like we still make CI4 plus heavy-duty diesel oil, which is heavily loaded with additives, way more than CJ4 allows, and Anthel doesn't intend to stop making it. So our 1540 AME uh, heavy duty diesel marine engine oil, loaded with zinc and phosphorus. Our 20W50 is also rated as a CI4 plus heavy duty diesel oil and an SL gasoline engine oil, loaded with zinc and phosphorus. But you go up to our DME and DEO, which are 15W40 heavy duty diesel oils, they're CJ4 rated and they're limited to 800 parts per million. And those oils are the ones that, that AMSO will tell you. We only rate those oils right now in certain instances for normal drain intervals. We do now rate them for three times the normal drain if you don't have fuel dilution problems. And Amsoil is scrambling to find another anti-wear additive other than zinc and phosphorus, something like organic molly, which is very expensive, to substitute for those things so you can get the same kind of anti-wear characteristics without the high concentrations of zinc and phosphorus. 
But it's a battle to do that because the chemistry was pretty well worked out for the high zinc and phosphorus levels. And when you take that away, you're really kind of in experimental medicine, so to speak, figuring out what's going to work the best. Um, all right, so hot rod oils. All I'm telling you, listen, I don't deal much in that market. If somebody comes, I'll be prepared for it. But if you, it's like the show that's going to be over here that Michael and George are talking about. There's another Amphil dealer that put his name in the hat that's working that. But the thing about that is there's car shows all around Central Florida where guys come up in there and they've got these cars and they've got these beautiful restored muscle cars coming up in that wonderful sound of a big block Chevy or something, you know, coming in there. Well, those guys are all the ones that you can, and if you can get before, here's the thing to do. Find a classic car club that you can go make a presentation at one of their meetings and tell them about this new hot rod oil. You'll be able to sell a ton of it to those guys because those cars, they, they're their love and joy. They're going to protect them. 